Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, we're just getting everybody transferred over because we couldn't figure out how to get live in the original event. Wouldn't let me connect through my phone. Um, so I'm going to, we're just going to wait a few minutes and then hopefully we can get everybody started. Sorry, I'll try and get my arm out of the way. I have to draw this way just because it's hard to kind of see everything from if I was to draw with my face showing. Pencil's very tricky to sort of see. Um, I'm just kind of waiting for people to join in. Just give me a moment. I'm still kind of new to making YouTube videos. Um, does anybody know how to access, like, how do I see the live chat? I kind of need help. <laughs> If you're looking for help, I don't know how to help you, but Um, once I get a good number of people kind of viewing and watching, I'll get started. Um, I'm not sure how to view the live chat. Oh, it says it's disabled. Um, let me see if I can fix that. Sorry, just one moment. I am trying to enable live chat here. And I don't know how. Okay, it does not give me an option to do so, so. I'm just going to get started. Um, apologize if you have any questions. Maybe you can comment and I might be able to see it um, if we're doing, if we're kind of going. I don't really know how to, this YouTube is not working out for me. Still trying to get used to it. Um, so when we're sort of drawing, I'm for my tools today, I'm going to be using an HB pencil. So that's just your re regular standard drawing pencil. Um, optional, you can get um, a darker pencil as well, so a higher number pencil. Um, sometimes with, so when you have like a 2B or 3B pencil, I don't even know if I have one. Let's see here. I'll use a 2B. So basically the higher the number on your pencil, the darker the lead and the darker areas you're going to get. I wouldn't go too, too dark, not like a 6B or a 4B. Um, all I have today is a 3B or a 2B. doesn't really matter as long as you stay within like... Uh, 
doesn't really matter as long as you stay within like um, that kind of number range. And then you'll also want an eraser that you don't mind cutting up. Um, sometimes when they get old and gunky, they sort of start to smear your page. So I just cut them and get them nice and fresh again. Um, so you'll probably want a pair. I also always have Q-tips for smudging. If you have paper stumps, which are these um, these guys, you can use those, but I usually use Q-tips in my tutorials just because I know everybody's got, got those at home. Uh, let me just try one more thing. Oh, I'm trying to enable chat, but it's not allowing me to do so, so I really apologize. Um, you know, after the fact, you can always kind of message us if you have any questions as I'm going. I don't know why this is not kind of focusing as well. Okay, so when you're drawing, you always want to start with your shape. Um, so if you look at the bird, its head is just like a nice sort of circle. And then we have like an oval for the body. Everything's in like geometric shapes. So if you kind of view in that regards, it's a little easier. So I'm just going to stick that in behind so that you can see what I'm doing as well as try and see if this will help with lighting a little bit. So I'm going to press a little harder um, so that you can see what I'm doing. But when you're drawing, try and be a little bit more light with your, your pencil. Okay, so we're just starting with a circle. Okay, and it's kind of, or an oval, and it's kind of on a slant. And so try and be nice and soft with your outline. Um, because we'll be, as you kind of add things things start to morph and change and you need to sort of adjust it as you go. So you want to have a nice lighter line than a darker line. Okay, and then we're going to stack the body. So if you look at the body, it's just an oval. Right there. So we're going to stack that. And I'm just pressing harder so that you can see what I'm doing, um, but you do want to go nice and light with this part. Okay. Just an oval for the body. And then we're going to connect the head to the body. So now we're scooping in and then kind of puffing them out. So it's like an S shape. Don't worry about all your little lines and whatnot. I'm just going to erase some smudging. Um, it's always good to have like a nice um, blank sheet of paper underneath your hand so that you're not smudging your work as you go. I don't use them in my tutorials just because I like you to always see what I'm doing. Um, so bring, so now we're going to go into that wing shape. So coming around the head and we're scooping the head and then we're give it like a quick little U shape so it's you know right into that wing okay so that's the top of his wing there Are you able to, I'm just seeing if you're able to like comment on the actual video. I know I don't have like live chat happening. I, it, it's really weird for my phone. Like it didn't allow me to like do certain things when I opened it. So if you can comment, try doing that. So maybe we can still interact. Um, Technology is not my friend ever. Okay, so now we're just making that wing shape. So look at the, the shape of that wing. It's kind of like a triangle. Easy peasy. Okay, 
I'm just going to bring it down. Oops. I'm going to kind of slant my phone for a minute so that we can kind of squeeze, squeeze in the image. Maybe I'll zoom out just a little bit. Whoa. There we go. It goes pretty far down, that wing, and then you're just zigzagging it back up. So don't worry, like don't stress at this part, just sort of, so I'm pulling down, then back up, down, then back up. It's going on a slant. And then we're kind of bringing that wing back into the body. I'm just going to tuck that under for a minute. Okay, we're going to do the same on the other side. Um, this one's a little bit lower, so this one's like almost above his head. Now this one's not as drastic, so it's sort of a little scoop. So you look at this U shape. Kind of, again, try and view everything in shapes. Try to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to show you that wing again. So we're just scooping in and coming back up. Scoop, come back up. Scoop, come back up. And then it can go right into the body. The rest is sort of, we're going to fill in to be tail. I'm just going to clean up some stuff here. Let's see if my lighting will kind of fix things. It's just getting kind of dark and gloomy out. a bit better. Sorry, there might be a little shadow from my hand just a little bit. Um, okay, so now that we have that shape of the body, we're going to come down. You can puff them out a little bit more. Try and be really loosey-goosey with your hand. Don't stress about having the perfect lines. Like, mine's really messy. We're going to be covering everything with hair uh, or fur. So don't stress about that stuff. Um, so I'm just going to stick his... He's going to be a little bit out of the image, but we kind of want to see just the bottom here. Okay, so from his back, try and view all this like it's a big sort of S shape. And you can't really go wrong. We're just sort of making guidelines of where we're going to put it put the tail. Um, so don't worry about every single little feather right now. We'll just sort of, we're just making the general shape here. If, when you're drawing, you always kind of want to make a map of where you're going to place all your things first, and then, um, then you can go in with your details. This one's going to go right over that wing, so This is just a general idea of where everything's going. So these are, try and think of these lines as the center of each little feather. See, every feather has like a little line kind of going through it. So center lines. So now that's all we're doing. So you can maybe add, I did one, two, three, four, five, 
five feathers at the for the tail. So we got this one coming down. There's one, two. We can even have them maybe go that way. I'll just give them like a nice S shape. And they don't have to be concrete, so don't, again, don't worry about it, how it looks. This is obviously just, we're just in the beginning phase. Okay, so we're going to go in with the face. Um, I'll try and go at like a nice slow pace. I know um, for some reason I can't enable the chat. I don't know what happened. Um, so I'll try and go at a nice slow pace if you're still kind of working away up top. So for the beak, a lot of people think to put the beak coming right off the edge of the face. Um, the beak is in the face. So it's growing out of it. So I'm going to come up to the camera, so if you can see that, see how the beak is directly sort of, you know, it's growing out of the face. So it's not coming off the outline. What we're going to do is start with a little curved line inside your head. And then just grow it out. They have, a phoenix has quite a long sort of crowish looking beak. We're going to point it out. Okay, we're trying to make like a um, triangle shape. So now we're scooping, trying to come up to that point. It can be kind of pointy. Maybe even arch that a bit more. Okay, and then down the center, just add a little line. Doesn't you don't have to bring it all the way to the top there. I might arch it. This is bugging me. more of an arch there. So while we're up here, I'm going to do the eye. I'm going to get real close so that you can sort of see what I'm doing. So right beside that beak, start with a little circle. I'm going to show you up close what the original looks like, so you know what you're sort of doing. So see how it's like a, a circle and then it's got like a lemon shape around it? Because it's sitting inside of... an eyelid. So on either side you can give a little... little point. Okay, and then inside that circle is going to be another circle. So that's a circle we're going to keep white. Okay, we don't want to fill that in. So now you're just fill in your bigger circle. Just keep that little area nice and light. And fill in a little bit more of that. There should only be like a little 
teeny tiny white speck. Okay, and then on either side of the eye, just do a little line. And then over top is like a little eyebrow. Inside the beak, um, you can erase that headline, that original sort of circle we did. This part of the beak should come in like a little bit further than the top. Okay, and the head, so it's how it's circular. We actually wanted to sort of grow into that beak. So it's not just to so try and have the head sort of get a little bit more lemon shaped. And then we're going to add a little nostril and in the upper part of the beak there. And then to shade the beak, I'm just kind of using the side of my pencil. Um, when I'm adding in like shadowing something, I always use the side of my pencil because it makes kind of like a flatter texture. Whereas when you do lines, you like the tip of your pencil, you see all that line work and we don't want that. So when you're filling in like a bigger area, just use the side. So I'm only sort of shadowing the tip of the beak and then fading it out as it gets closer to the head. So I'm just going to put that down for a minute. Um, I'm going to go over um, how to do hair or um, fur texture. Um, so maybe if you haven't done any of my animal tutorials, I would maybe grab a, a blank sheet of paper um, so that you can kind of see, or so you, bleh, so you can practice uh, this next little uh, part because we're the basically the rest of the the bird is just hair. Um, so this is gonna be good practice. Um, so. What I see most common when people are doing animals is they fill in the hair with these lines, okay, because they're trying to make fur. Um, hair doesn't work that way. So if you push and flick, so I'm pushing off and I'm flicking, so what's happening is that where you can see where the hairline starts, but you don't really see where it ends. It sort of fades out. Okay, so it's a nice sort of transition. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up my pace. Okay, because we really want to do every individual hair. I know it sounds like a lot of work, and it is. Animals are always a lot of work. Um, so you don't want to do, you know, this. You're going to be there for like hours trying to do hair texture. Um, so it's a flicking motion and then it's really fast. So I'm just sort of flicking and always going in the direction that the hair is flowing. Okay, so if I had a head, you know, I'm going around the head. Okay, so we're flicking always in the motion that the animal or like the shape that we're trying to achieve. So the the head of the phoenix is a little bit weird. Um, they have like this kind of spiky sort of 
hair texture on their head. Um, so we're going to sort of start with this like more, it's like flicking up and out kind of thing. They have, they just have weird, bizarre hair. So be patient for this next part. Um, so you can, we kind of want to take out, if you have a heavy outline, you can take that out a little bit. Mine's heavy. Okay, I still see where the head shape is, um, but basically you don't always, you don't want to see that outline. As animals, we don't see their skull or whatever. So, um, so now we're just starting from sort of the nose area. And we're flicking up over top of that outline. You don't have to press too hard. We're going to go in and sort of make different um, strokes. We're going to highlight it okay, around the eye. Start to scoop. And scoop around. And then we're kind of flicking it out. You can press a little harder in some areas. Like you can have some darker strokes. And come around the eye. There's like a little bit. Give them like a little under eye. And around the, the back as well. I kind of added just few little scribbles of darker pieces. You can even do that around the top. And just sort of scribble it in. You don't have to really stress too much about you know, all that stuff. So it's a quick motion. Um, you can get rid of that neck, this part. Okay, so now we're scooping downwards. Over here we were scooping out. Now we're scooping down. And it's going to start to form this neck. So you're always trying to go in the shape that's closest to you. So I'm scooping with that neck. Kind of flowing it out. I'm just, I'm still using my HB pencil. I'll always tell you if I switch my pencil. Um, sorry, I should have said that earlier. I know that you guys can't really, um, chat with me. Again, I apologize, um, if you're trying to figure out how to talk. Try and see if you can, like, comment on the video. Maybe that'll help if you can't. Again, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just using my HB pencil. I didn't really use the dark pencil until I got to like some of the shading and you don't even need it. Like if you don't have that pencil, don't worry about it. Um, so now we're going to highlight. So I'm just going to show you in stages. So we're going to do sort of like the head, a wing, the body, another wing, and then the tail. So we're going to kind of work in little sections. Um, so to highlight it, so we don't want just like one flat gray tone because it, it just makes them sort of flat and boring, right? So to highlight them, so they have these like very, they have like almost like a thicker sort of uh, beak, or not beak, um, hair sort of texture. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be using the tip of my eraser. Um, so if your eraser is kind of all rounded out like this, what you can do is just cut that off. And you can use that eraser or you can use the little choppy piece because now you have a nice little corner. So you can use whichever kind of works for you. So basically now I'm going to be using my eraser like the tip of my pencil. So now I'm just doing the same, um, the same motion with my eraser. And I'm adding in like thicker little hairs. So now I'm just kind of chopping up that gray. Going in the same sort of direction. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my pencil. And maybe sort of um, outline some of those highlighted areas. Just make them more prominent. And maybe 
frame them a bit more. Add in some darker little strokes of And we're just trying to get all these different sort of textures going. And darken around the beak a little bit more. I think I did this piece a little bit too far up. It's kind of bothering me a bit. I'm just going to fix that. I'm going to bring that beak up. Bring it back in. If you had the same mistake, or it's not a mistake, it's just a, a learning experience. You can kind of fix that up as well. Okay, so let's move on to the wing. I'm just going to add a little bit more. And a little bit more darker strokes in there. The, basically, the more you layer, um, like the more you add to your hair, the more realistic it, it'll look. So it's just constant layering. So for the wing, um, there's going to be a double line. So this first line that we did, you want to keep that. Okay, and then we're going to go in and just add another little line. And then it kind of just melts into the rest of the, the wing there. It's the same on the other side. So it's just a parallel line to the top. And then it sort of just flows back in. Okay, and then that's going to be a little bit more of a different hair texture. So I'm just going to keep showing you like what we're doing. So the hair over here is kind of going just like smaller, smaller little hairs. I didn't even fill in over there. It's more of like the, um, it's almost like a bone texture. It's their muscle or something. So it's not really like a hairy sort of piece. So now I'm doing that same hair texture, but I'm working into, sorry, there's like a dog yapping outside. I'm just going to close my window. Go away. Okay. And then... Sorry, so I'm kind of going on an angle and just flicking into that like whiter part. I'm just going to even use my messy outline to create my hair. Hair texture, it's already sort of working there for me. I'm just kind of pushing in to the center of that. I wouldn't really stress too much about this sort of part. So kind of the center of that wing muscle or whatever that is. Can be white. Okay, same over here. I might as well just work sort of back and forth. So I'm just sort of going in on an angle here. It doesn't really matter because this is supposed to be white anyways, but we kind of want to add that extra little detail. So I wouldn't stress too much about what it, I'm just kind of throwing it up, going with the angle You're always kind of working in the shape that's closest to you. So if th this out outline is curving, our lines are going to curve as well. 
know, we're not really meant to view our artwork like up this close, so don't stress about little details. Um, sometimes that, like when I'm teaching, a lot of people, they're too worried to make a mistake or make a wrong um, pencil line, but we're not really supposed to view our art that close. So don't worry about those things, because when you pull away, um, the details sort of just blend together anyways. I like to call it faking details. Um, you know, you don't have to... stress about every little teeny tiny mark on your paper. Okay, the, um, if I can kind of stress anything enough, it's to sort of let go. Um, don't stress. Just be loosey-goosey with your hand. Be confident. Once you lose that confidence, you can sort of that's when you start to like second guess yourself and then you're like, ah, and start kind of messing up. If you're just like, eh, whatever. Don't worry about the outcome. Just have fun. Okay, so we're going to make the wing, um, all that feathery part in the wing. It's a little bit different. Same sort of um, texture, but um, we're going to do it in shapes. So if you look at, so we kind of want to layer, sorry, it's kind of hard to, my, uh, my lamps are reflecting the, the lead. Here, I'm just going to turn that away for a second. Um, so to make it look layered, like we're going to start with like shorter um, sort of feather, feather shapes up top and then get a little bit bigger with them and then get longer with them. Okay, and then we're just going to shadow under each layer so that they kind of pop from each other. Okay, so look, view them in shapes. They look like little triangle shapes, right? But they're zigzaggy, like I'm not, I didn't really do perfect little triangle shapes, right? You want it to be messy and flowing. Um, the phoenix is a very sort of wild bird. So when you're drawing nature, you kind of want to, draw a little bit more wild like that's what i'm saying by let go don't stress about every little detail because um it's meant to be sort of crazy so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna show you like the basic shape of each little sort of feather so i have to be like right up close to your face but you know when you pull away you can't really see what i'm doing so that first layer, so I'm just like zigzag, go back up, zigzag, go back up. Yeah, but kind of think of them in like triangle ish shapes. Don't really stress too much. Kind of just blend it over. Like, it's literally just scribbling. So then, you know, the, the next layer is going to be a bit bigger. So I go up, and then I come back down. And the whole time, I'm just zigzagging. I'm going to fill in between there. It doesn't You don't even... Oops. Zigzag, go back up. Zigzag, go back up. If that's too hard for you, like if it's like a little bit too freeing and you can't let go. And just make general like triangle shapes. And then we're going to do another row. So these ones are going to be a little longer. Zigzag, go back up. Zigzag, go back up. 
zigzag, go back up. And then these ones are just already there. I'm gonna try and zoom in for this part. So now what we're going to do, um, I'm going to use the side of my pencil. We kind of just want like a little under layer. It's going to take us forever to do a bazillion little hairs. So you can kind of just fill in. We're going to just make like a, a base coat almost first. I'm just filling in the, that top layer with a basic gray. Okay, and then we want to shade underneath that that wing bone thing. Okay, so I'm just I'm using a pushing a little harder and pushing into each just pulling that black down a little bit. So from here, I'm just sort of shading, pulling down. Again, try not to stress. Okay, you can start to like outline. Sort of filling in. I just really want to shade underneath that wing first. You can just pull it down. Zigzag, pull down. Zigzag, pull down. I'm just trying to get really dark underneath there, but you don't want to like just have like this stark black line. That's why you're just you're always trying to like fade that shadow into another piece. Okay, now we're gonna um, highlight. So just like we did with the, the head, we're just gonna use a little corner piece of our eraser and I'm just gonna slice in some white in there. Don't worry if you erase your outline. We're gonna just keep building some layers. I'm just throwing in some little bit of eraser. Okay, and now we can kind of go in and Maybe throw in some of those hair textures again, just like we did in the head. Maybe give those a little bit more of an outline to our little triangle pieces. It's meant to be like really messy, so I wouldn't like, don't worry about it if you're sort of. I'm just like pulling down some little hairs. Outlining some of the triangle pieces. Basically, you, you want grays, you want black, you want white tones, you want a little bit of everything in there. So that's why I'm kind of doing it sort of quick. Okay, so now from, now we have that first layer. You kind of outline that a little bit if you need to. Okay, 
Here we're going to do the next. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit. We're going to do that next layer. Okay, so again, you want to like, you want your darkest tone to be underneath that first tone. So when you add dark to light, it makes the lighter look lighter and the darker look darker. So I'm just using the side of my pencil and sort of filling in underneath that first layer of wing. Again, I'm just pushing it down like about halfway. And maybe give that top layer another little outline so it sticks out a bit more. And then you can play. Um, so this is where I'm going to kind of introduce the Q-tip. Is you can start combing out his little hair. It, it like softens. It softens it so you don't have that pencil texture. Sort of start combing down that um, that shadow that we just threw in there. And it'll kind of fill in the wing to be like that gray tone. So you know how we sort of did that in the top where we filled in the with the gray. Now we can do that with the Q-tip, and it'll it'll soften the hair a bit more. Okay, now we kind of need to highlight again. So we're losing. When you smudge, you sort of lose your your contrast. So I'm going to go in and just on the top layer of wing, I'm going to re sort of highlight. Re-highlight and maybe now on these ones, highlight these. So I'm just giving them a little pull. Making some white areas. And then I'm going to throw in some hair texture. So it's just, it's constantly layering. Like you can't really do it wrong. As long as you sort of keep your shapes and you're just throwing in some you want some grays, you want some whites, you want some blacks. So we're just kind of always layering the hair texture as you kind of go down. Well, there's different ways you can do it. If it's like too much for you to sort of let loose, you can keep doing that hair texture like you did in the head where it's more kind of direct. Just Just remember to keep those that contrast in there. You really want those whites and those darks so that they they constantly look layered. It's kind of hard to see my contrast because my lighting is reflecting, but I'm just trying to keep my darks underneath my whites basically. This light is shining too bright. And that dog is back. <laughs> okay, so next layer, again, you're just sort of, I'm just adding that dark under the the next layer 
underneath that previous layer of feather. So I'm just like tossing it down. I'm always trying to like blend downwards. And then again, you can give it a little, a little pull with your Q-tip. Just pull that gray tone down. And then just make sure that you add in your, sometimes when you smudge it, you lose your contrast. So you have to re sort of outline that top layer. This is where you can add that, that darker lead. So if you wanted a 3B pencil, um, you want that really heavy contrast. Okay, this is my 3B pencil, and you can notice the difference. This light has got to go, I think. Hold on. That's going to have too much of a shadow on me. Let's see if that works for a minute. So see this like the 3B pencil like really adds a stark sort of contrasted black. So this is where you want to use those pencils. It makes it easier to sort of contrast underneath each sort of layer. So I'm always just like pulling down. See I'm just like I'm just going down in little hair pulls. Oops. Pull, pull, pull. And just remember to highlight your your white areas. Sometimes I go back in up top just to re outline or re highlight. Okay. And then my last little layer. I'm just throwing in some dark. Not even really gonna. I can highlight, but the wing's kind of the trickiest part. So if that was hard for you, don't worry, because we're gonna do a little bit easier in the the belly of the bird. So I'm always like pulling hairs up into the highlight, like down into the next one, next layer there. I'm just trying to make like little sections of the wing. And that difference in the pencil really, really picks up the contrast. So now we're just going to do like a mini version of that in the stomach. So on the stomach, instead of going straight down, again, we have to keep the shape of it. So um, I'll do, do this one a little easier. So we're just teeny tiny zigzags. See how they're just going? But you want to curve them, like you want to keep the, the shape of the stomach. So zigzag, there's basically zigzags and little sort of triangle shapes. And you don't really want them too patterned. That is way too patterned. Um, I was just kind of talking and not seeing what I was doing. Um, 
to make it look more natural, you don't really want that sort of perfect pattern. Um, just because the way nature works, we don't have things really too perfect. So try and make it less sort of systematic. Always keep that sort of angle going. Over here can just sort of start to blend into whatever. Again, there's so much craziness going on that your eye won't really pick up on that. And then this down here starts to flow like into the tail. So you can start to curve it sort of down and then we'll blend that in to be tail feathers. Even, eh, yeah, I did another layer. I think it kind of goes down a bit more. Ooh, we have to draw the feet. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> Let's draw in those feet first. So uh, finish that up, and then we'll um, do some little feet bones. I'm just going to check the Facebook page and see if anybody's commented or messaged us to see if I'm trying to get in contact with us. No. He's not, so... Okay, um, for those feet, they're easy peasy. The first one's looking straight at us, so I'm going to show you close up um, as to what it kind of looks like. It's just like a little claw. It gets hidden in the the hair, so this one's a little bit more trickier. So let's start with this guy over here. So perspectively, where it is, it's probably right in here. I'm going to erase some of my... So I went a little, got a little carried away there. Um, so the first, let's draw the foot first. Just a little, a little box almost, or a little U shape. And then the toes are looking at us, so. Like a little oval. This one's a little bit more straight on, so it'll be more circular. This one's like the other one, so it's more oval again. And then he's got another claw at the bottom. So it's more like kind of triangular. And you can draw little nails coming off that. So just like teeny tiny little triangles on each little toe. Um, now I didn't really want to fill the, those in because I want to see, see it. I want it to stand out from the hair. But you can give it like a teeny tiny little toss of gray just using the side of your pencil if you don't want it to be flat white and then the other claw is coming off from the body I'll try and keep those both in so I'm like holding my thing up so it's tricky to do this um, so that other claw is coming off from the body, so it's kind of right beside this one, so try and... First, you're, we're going to see a little bit more of his leg, or her leg, whichever. Okay, and then we're going to start with... The first thumb. Give it a little thing. Oh, 
like a little weird oval shape. Okay, and then coming off from that oval shape, give it like a comes out, then like a little V point. Okay, and then just hook it back in like a finger. Give it a little knuckle. Right. And that we're going to see another claw. So then coming off from that knuckle, it's more of like a L shape up here. A knuckle. And then just kind of melt that one back in to the other one. And then you can add your little claw fingernail. And I didn't, again, I didn't really fill those in. Um, but you can give it like a little gray tone if you want it, if you don't want it to be just flat. You can have a little sh shadowing coming out from the, or comes out from the body. Just kind of threw in some black. I might have did that one too high. Looks weird. Oh well. So, um, now continue your little zigzaggy hairs or pattern we're just gonna go just a little further down the tail i might actually cut him in a bit more he's just looking too pudgy so i'm gonna cut out a part of his body over here Okay, if you have that problem, you really want this here to be more like an S shape. They're very sort of, they're not like a, a little robin bird where they got a big puffy chest. We can just slim that down. Um, give your pencil a sharpen if you haven't in a while. Okay, so now we're going to fill in that hair just the same. So we're just sort of layering. I know now there's a lot um, so that you can actually kind of quicken your pace. So what we're just going to do, if you want, you can take your time with this. Do it on your own sort of time. But um, all I'm doing is just tossing in a row of black underneath each little feather. You can, f again, you can fake a lot of your details. You don't have to do every single little, I'm just sort of shadowing quickly. By going under e each little feather, throwing in some black. Okay, again, we don't want like a nice, we don't want this perfect system of um, feather. So you kind of have to do it quick so that you get away from trying to make things perfect. So now I'm just sort of smudging. And I might even lose some of my outline and that's fine. 
Okay, because we want it to be natural. You can even use, like, if there's lead already on your Q-tip, you can use that to, to smudge with as well. Again, I'm just sort of layering underneath first, adding my shadow first. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Try to get away from being perfect. Okay, now I'm taking a corner again. I might have to wipe it off. And you can sort of, like, if you lose your outline, don't stress about it. You kind of want it to be random. So now I'm just tossing in some highlight. I use my eraser just as much as my pencil when I'm drawing. Okay, and sometimes those highlights actually help form newer hairs. Uh, that's kind of why I wanted you to, in reality, like I wouldn't actually outline each little um, feather. I would actually just do a base coat and then this, like erase, because the eraser actually kind of makes a hair texture because it smudges the lead and then it sort of forms these little strokes of hair. So now what I'm going to do is look at those strokes of hair that that eraser created and just go in and outline those. See how much more natural that looks? Okay, so now I'm forming around the eraser mark. Don't worry about your initial outline of your little feathers. Okay, try and go with what looks natural. Okay, that's the sort of the key. Um, that's even when you're doing human hair, that's the best way to do it is um, see where your eraser makes the smudge mark. Okay, I pretty much just made you do the feathers so that you didn't, <laughs> so that you had something concrete to sort of see first. But try and use your eraser mark so you'll see like little gray smudges. Just enhance those. Enhance your, your shadows wherever they sort of stuck out the most. That makes sense. I guess you can't respond, but trying to train your eye to let go and to start seeing things form. Like see this like where the eraser kind of smudged into my my dark piece. So I'm just going to enhance that dark piece. And it made all these little kind of smudgy marks in here. There's like little gray. So I know the quality of YouTube isn't the best. Um, but there's little gray smudgy pieces where my eraser sort of just pushed my lead around. So now I'm just going to enhance that. So much more natural it looks. There's no pattern in the feather. It's a little bit more wild. Um, you can sort of cut into the head a bit more. So even with the, if you wanted to do that with the head, you know, just pull some of that white, white highlight over top of your stomach feathers. That way the head looks like it's on top. You can do that as well push back in. So zig zig zag. Try not to stress about your pencil marks. I'm going to see if my lighting will cooperate again. Ooh. Okay, 
Oh, lead is the worst to try and light. See how it's kind of sort of reflecting? Oh, there we go. Maybe I'll go over here. Ooh. I'll just make cast. Ah, that's not too bad. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit too bright. Maybe I'll take it down a notch. I'm just destroying things now. I might leave it right there. I'll just enhance. I'll, I'll try and go darker. That way you can really see what I'm doing. Basically, the more you add, again, like the more tones you add, the more blacks, the more grays, the more... It just will... It just adds another layer, another dimension of feather. Okay, so let's go in and do this wing. Um, you kind of know how to do it now, so... We'll do that, and then we'll do the tail, and then we'll be done. So again, start with your little choppy... Now this wing is going different. It's curving in. So what I meant by going with the shape that's closest to you is um, this outside wing is the closest shape. It's the cl like a parallel line. So we're working within that shape. So you want to keep that shape going. So that's why we're now curving these feathers to keep that shape. So we're curving it in instead of whereas this one was curving out. If that makes sense. You're always trying to work in the same shape you're trying to achieve. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be... Uh, I don't know. Huh. <laughs> I've long gapped now that I'm trying to think of examples, but... I'm going to stick that. If we're done with the head, I'm just going to cut it off. Not literally, but just so you can see the wing. Um, just stop right there, actually. Um, just realize that we want to have this feather over top. And it has to be, like, white, so it might be hard to sort of... Um, erase, so I think we just have to go do that, that one sort of... Feather first. Uh, sorry. It's so hard to do tutorials at night with pencil. I don't have the, the liberty of having paint colors, so it's harder to see. I'm just cleaning up my page here. Okay, first we'll just do this one and then we can continue with. You always have to think of layers, like what's in behind. Um, paint, uh, drawing's different in regards to painting. If you're used to painting, you know, you build your background and then work to your foreground, whereas um, drawing, you kind of have to work back and forth between the two because it's harder sort of to erase pencil than go over top of it. Um, so start with that first sort of feather there. It's a little bit too long. Um, so now we're still doing some zigzaggy stuff. I know this one's a wild drawing. Um, I'll come up to the camera for you. And I'll stick that there so you can see. So that's not going to work. So what we're going to do, think of like a leaf. I'll try and not do this one so wild and crazy. Oh, that's casting a shadow. Okay. If 
if it's easier, you can make a little outline around your tail feather first, like that. So I did that very lightly. Okay, and then you can, so you have this like pathway. Now you're zigzagging back in. Stay on your angle. Okay, so you're, the way you're zigzagging is not like you're not zigzagging it straight. Like try and think of all these edges are getting pulled in towards the center. Sort of. Zigzag out, come back in, zigzag out, come back in. Go in, come back out, go in. Come back out. But work along the path. Okay, so see how it's all these the the inner parts are getting pulled sort of towards the body. Like when you zigzag it back in, it's it's not going straight. It's like slanted. Like a lot of people have trouble with feathers, so um, don't stress if you didn't really get that. It's a tricky, tricky thing to get. Okay, so now we can continue with our wing there. I just kind of have to work around it. Sorry, I'm messing around with my light because it's really annoying. Okay. Start with your shadow. Again, you can just sort of pull down using the side of your pencil, and then you can smooth it out if you prefer that. I just find it easier. Basically, you just always want like a base coat. You just don't want to work on white. I know like we go in with our eraser, but we need that base coat to be able to erase, to be able to find our little, to define our highlights. So think of it like you don't, like when you're working on a canvas, you don't want to just straight up work on white, a white background. It's sort of the same as drawing. You sort of want uh, a background first before you start layering on top. Think of everything in sort of layers. I'm just sort of making some flat gray tone. And I'm going to go in and maybe define. You can erase, make your outline or your highlights, then make your Shadows a bit more prominent. Outline your your shapes again. Always like pull back into the highlight. So I zigzag, pull back in. Zigzag, pull back in. Yeah. Fumbled over my pencil there. I'm gonna add some, a little bit more of those like hair texture. Like we did in the head where you're just kind of pulling hair down and do that as well. 
there's, I don't think there's really a wrong or right way to do it. I'm just pulling back down. And you can use your 3B pencil or your 4B. Basically, your, I would just stick around the lower number B pencils. Once you get into like 6Bs, they're like a little bit too drastic for something like this. Um, I don't really even use those ever. this just this, it helps with the black so you can get like a really contrasted black tone if that's what you want I'm just breaking up my wing Go in with your highlights. All right, so I'm going to speed up this process a little bit. Um, you can now that you know how to do the wing and stuff, you can kind of do that after if you're not finished. Um, I just kind of want to move on to the tail because we're sort of cutting it close to. A two hour mark, which is, there's nothing wrong with. So, just you know, it's getting kind of for some people. Um, I'm just gonna move that light a little bit. Um, so now we're gonna continue that shape. So, what I I did about five, yeah, one, two, three. I don't know, I got all confusing up here, maybe six. Um, six tail feathers. So I just give them like S shapes and have some that are like tucked in behind. So that's kind of like the center line of them. I'll mess that one up. Okay, and if, the, if it's easier for you to sort of make your trail first. I just did it very faintly. If you can see that, I'll try and darken it. So I'm just scooping around the, oops, um, around that center line of it, okay? And then make your trail. So you're zigzagging out, coming back in towards the center. Okay, even around. Around a, a loop. Try and keep tight to that center line. Zigzag, ouch, come back in, zigzag, ouch, come back in. I'm just going to raise my guideline if I can see it. Kind of sticking out anywhere. Okay, once you get the hang of it, you don't really need that guideline, but 
Zigzag, come back in. Zigzag, come back in. So follow your center line. You can have some filler ones, like, so see how they're, like, perfectly spaced. You don't really want that. So you can have, like, some ones that are just, like, tucked in behind. So you might have to sort of just scribble, scribble in some filler zigzags. Maybe some short little tails, just so it's nice and full. This guy's a little bit too fat over here. Let's Keep them close to the body. This guy's got a little bit more of a wild tail. And then all I did was really just shadow some hairs over top. I kept the tails quite light. Like I might have thrown in um, just using like a Q-tip that's already been used. Um, and just sh thrown in some shadow. Kind of randomly. Like down the center line of the tail. I generally kept them light, lighter than the body. So you can just sort of throw in some, a little bit of gray tone in them. Um, and then kind of where it comes into the body, um, I did some heavier shadowing. So this is where you can grab your 2B pencil, if you like. And just sort of like we did with the wing, just threw in a little bit of heavier shadow at the base of each sort of feather. rid of that glare. Let them come up here. Just sort of where the tail's coming out. And then you can smudge that in just using your Q-tip. Smudge that down the tail a little bit. Blend it in. Where that dog driving me nuts. So you kind of have to like play with it a little bit. Maybe re outline some of the tail feathers up top. It kind of gets lost in that shadow. They can blend um, some highlighted hairs down over top of that shadow as well. So you're just constantly sort of 
blending the two. together and then you're just sort of making them look like they flow into each other. Might make them a little bit thinner over here. Just take out some of that tail. A little bit too Too full. This is an easy fix. And just thin out kind of right around his legs a bit. If you have that same problem, you can just take it in a notch. So again, you can just play with your contrast a little bit. Like if you're still kind of working away, if you're working away over here. Um, don't stress about it. It's all generally, once you get the hang of it, it's kind of easy to go about it. Um, and there's one last thing I did. If you're still working over here too, like if you're just working on your feathers, don't worry about it too much. And the shading in the tail, again, I didn't, I wanted to keep it light. And after time, like my smudging and my hand sort of kind of darken them. But um, you can kind of go in and just add contrast if you like. I'm just going with my 2B pencil and... Throw in some black a little bit, but you want the, that... Um, those feathers to sort of stand out a bit. Uh, that's why I didn't fill them in or give them too much detail. Um, so there's one last step and that is to... Um, I added a little shadow around the bird so that it's not just... looks like it's floating. Um, I kind of gave it some some wind um, so what I did was I took my used Q-tip, so one that's already got lots of lead on it, um, and I just sort of smudged in his same direction. So I'm just pushing. It's going to hard, be hard to see um, for you to see because it's a very faint sort of gray tone. Um, generally, you'll probably only notice on your own. So I'm just taking that and... Smudging around his shape. Um, if you're, that's not really working too well. If I don't have enough lead, um, what you also can do is just very faintly with your HB pencil, your regular pencil, is add that that line in around around his body, his or her. And then take the Q-tip and smudge it out, which is it'll be a little bit more dramatic. That's the only thing that once you add lead, it's going to be a little bit quite noticeable, where you don't really want it to be so drastic. You just want it to be nice and faint. Uh, especially down in the tail area would be nice. Just more like wispy sort of whoosh, uh, line marks down there because it's more like because he's in flight, so you kind of want that like wispiness. So it, um. 
it's hard to use Q-tips to do that sort of work. Um, if you were to take up drawing seriously, I wouldn't use Q-tips. I would use my, I'll show you, my paper stumps. Um, so these, they're supposed to be white, but over time you use them so much you get lead on them. And then you can use that lead to smudge. We'll see how, how much nicer that is. It's just like it's already on there. So it's it's basically just like a little cheater. Um, so that's what I use a lot. So when you're drawing, try and use these instead of Q-tips. Um, I just use Q-tips because I know everybody's got them at home. Um, I like to make sure that everybody's able to be included in the tutorial. So um, if you take up drawing, I would definitely invest in these. They're like a dollar a pack or something. They're awesome. Um, so that is how you draw a phoenix in flight. Um, my little pep talk is that uh, they're all sort of... They're all going to look different. It's hard to draw the same thing twice. So don't stress if... Um, if you struggled with it, it's a bit of a more wild sort of piece. Um, and most animals are, they're, they're kind of tricky. Um, and I appreciate you all sort of uh, being patient in the beginning of the video, if you stayed for the whole thing. Um, I appreciate you sort of maneuvering over from the event. Um, it was supposed to be under on uh, our YouTube page. It got a little confusing. Um, sometimes I, I just, it's different on each platform, so I was using my phone, and it uh, it's not the same as a laptop. So um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. You can always catch um, some, some more of my, my live videos um, on our YouTube page if you want to check out some other ones. I have one coming up next month. Of, I think I'm going to be doing a guitar. I might just show you quick. So this one's a little bit, um, it's not as wild, so we're going to have a little bit more perfect line work and stuff like that, a little bit softer, softer with, um, with the lead. So um, I hope to see you all in the future. Thank you very much for joining and thank you for supporting Artist Palette. We greatly appreciate it. So I hope you guys have a great night. Bye. Mm-hmm.